All right, this whole video, it's based upon the fall of the USA, the coming out of the Antichrist, but it also has a religious theme to it uh, that ties into Nimrod, Samaramus, and Tammuz, which are basically replicated in the story of Osiris and Isis and Horus. Uh, and Nimrod ascends into the, Nimrod dies, ascends into the sun, and becomes Baal, according to the mythology. And this ties into the Bible heavy. Well, they're trying to say that uh, Nimrod is basically the precursor to Christ. Okay, it's same for Osiris. They basically try to melt all of this together and say Mary is uh, Samaramus, uh, and you know the father is the ascended version of uh, Nimrod, Baal. They're they're literally trying to usurp Christianity and bring it into this mythological uh, pagan theme of Nimrod, Sam Ramos, and Tammuz. All right, now in the story of Nimrod, he ascends into the, he dies, he ascends into the sun, and then he impregnates his wife, Sam Ramos, with the rays of the sun. And that's what you see here. You see this ascended being uh, who is supposed to be, you know, he's in outer space and he's supposed to represent the ascended one who is, uh, depicted as the sun here, made up of fire. Well, he breathes down this fire. See, he's the same guy that it's about to show. He breathes down this fire and impregnates this egg. Well, in the mythology, once uh, his wife, Samaramus, dies, she comes back as Ishtar, and that's where we get the Easter from, etc., and all this stuff ties together. I'm telling you, like this, this last day Antichrist doctrine is nothing more than a continuation of the corruption of Christianity that began long ago, uh, whenever Christianity and Rome were merged together, and is perpetuated. You know, I'm not against Catholics, but is perpetuated in the Catholicism and the Roman Catholicism. Even today, the Vatican is located inside of Rome. Okay, and that is because it Rome adopted Catholicism. Basically, Rome adopted Christianity as its official religion, and then the merger just began, where they took all of this pagan mythology and just tied it into Christianity to perform to produce something that was tangible or something that was easily swallowed by the pagan society of the uh, world that existed back then. Okay. So, but you see this uh, ascended being, the sun being, breathing down this fire and impregnating this egg. And on the wall here, you see where it says Ra, R-A. Well, that's the same as Baal. You know, this is the sun deity. Okay. And the, the Bible names Apollo in Revelation 9-11. It says the king, they had a king over them, who in the Hebrew hath this uh, name Abaddon, but in the Greek hath his name Apollyon, okay, Apollyon, which that's where uh, Apollo comes from. Apollo is basically a play on Apollon, ties into Apollyon. Uh, it means destroyer, uh, but he is supposed to be the sun deity, okay, the same for Helios, who is called Titan. All this ties into this video. I've showed that. He impregnates this egg with the rays of the sun, and then the sun is incarnate after that. So now you have this being who is the sun, who eventually comes out of the cave at the end. Well, in the mythology, uh, Osiris, or excuse me, Isis is depicted as the moon. Osiris ascends into the sun, and he's, so he's depicted as the sun. And so you have Osiris, Isis, the moon, and then Ra uh, Horus, who is impregnated by Osiris, uh, and Isis has him. Okay, and Horus is depicted as the sun as well. Well, in this video here, named Heliophont, which refers to the sun speaking, you have Helio, which means sun. You have this sun here, a depiction of an eclipse. Helio means sun, the big O. It shows an eclipse. What is an eclipse? It is when the sun and the moon come together. Uh, the moon blocks out the light of the sun. And so literally what you have here 
in their mythological interpretation is Isis and Osiris or Isis and Ra coming together. And what happens when they come together? The rays of the sun lights up over here above this eye. And then you see a third object come into view. And this is the sun of their union. This is Tammuz coming into view here or Horus. Okay. So the sun, the light goes up the eye and the light from the sun goes up and that represents the impregnation by the rays of the sun goes up and then the dot above the eye appears. Okay. And I've said before, these are all capital letters. There's no need for any object to come up above this eye for it to be legible or, it, I mean, it's extra, but it has meaning. It has meaning in that the sun and the moon come together and they produce uh, this third object. And then you hear like a tomb opening and this object moves in closer to the sun and the moon. Because the, uh, the legend has it that Tammuz dies as well and then ascends into the sun like Nimrod did. Okay, so you have uh, Tammuz appearing by the rays of the sun and then you hear the crypt opening, if you will, and then he moves over here to the sun. Okay, and that is what you see here as well. Notice it's above the eye. Okay, it's above the eye. Well, over here you see the eye as well. Uh, eye, comma, pet, goat, too. I, comma, pet, goat. If I was to say I, Jason, this is the same thing. You know, I'm, it's a, it's synonymous. I am defining I. Well, I, comma, pet, goat, it's defining I as pet goat. That's how I understand it. Well, where does this goat come from with the 666 on his forehead? He comes out of the eclipse. Okay, that's what this signifies. You have this black hole here with a light corona around it. This is depicting an eclipse. You have this black hole. This is depicting an eclipse. Okay. That's why you have this circular white light around it, around this black center. That's what an eclipse is. You, you see the corona of the sun around the outside of the moon, uh, but the center is dark. And that's what this is showing. And then out of this union comes this goat. Okay. And this right here symbolizes Saturn's sickle. Uh, which has to do with the castration of the sky. Uh, it's, it's all tied into the same mythology, which they try to merge together to produce one harmonious doctrine. Okay, and they're trying to say this is the Christian doctrine. Okay, they're trying to give you a false version of Christianity. Okay, because if the devil just comes at you and says Christianity's false, and you know, believe me instead, well, you're not going to buy into that. But if he can paint a picture for you that this is Christianity, well, then it makes it uh, more palatable okay, to, to God's people. So, but out of this union, this eclipse figure here comes the goat with the 666 on his forehead. Okay. Now, why does he have the 666 on his forehead, it represents the mark of the beast. And they're going to tell you through the mark of the beast, you can transcend uh, just like their son. Apparently, okay, this I don't know how much symbolism is tied into it. But this is the way that I'm viewing their plan based upon this video. That Prince Harry and Meghan Markle uh, got married and they represent uh, the... Oh, Nimrod and uh, I, or excuse me, not Ice, but Samaramus, and they're going to have a son who is going to represent Tammuz. That their son is going to die, and he's going to come back to life, and that's going to be the image of the beast that is given the power to speak, etc. Uh, that's how I understand it. Now I could be wrong, but that's how I'm understanding their plan based upon this video based upon uh, a lot of material. And I'm going to show you in a second here how this is just a recurring theme in uh, Hollywood movies, etc. Uh, so you have him come out of the sun and then the blocks fall, the kids' blocks. Uh, I, comma, pet, go to, you know, and these kid blocks as I said before, the consonants are red, the vowels are white. 
and the I is actually a H on its side in an in H pet goat two or Harry the second Prince Harry's monogram is just a H. See, it's a H, but it's turned on its side. It's red to match the red consonants. They're telling you stuff in this video. They just don't do this stuff for no reason. They're telling you something here. Okay, this is depicting the plan of the enemy because he wants to deceive you into believing that they are truly transcendent. Okay, uh, so is it saying Harry the Second? That's what it deals with, as I understand it, is the son of Prince Harry. Okay. Uh, so even though it says I pet go to, it's obviously a consonant because it's red matching the other red consonants. Okay, so it's a sideways H. All right, but these kid blocks turn gold. Why do they turn gold? Because the kid dies and then he is depicted as the son after that tra a transcendent being uh, who comes back from death. That's how I understand what's going on. Okay, and they're going to tie all these together. They're going to say, Nimrod, and, because they say Nimrod and Tammuz both ascended into the sun. So they're basically merging them into the same uh, sun aspect. Now, I want, I want to show you this stuff here. Uh, and and I've, I think I showed you how raw is on the wall here. What well, all ties together. Okay, whenever the fire got raw written on the wall here, that's the Egyptian sun deity agreeing with uh, Baal, Ra, R-A. That's what it ties into. Well, this mythology, it's interesting. Osiris ascends, he dies, and he ascends into, you know, the sun. Okay, so this is the same doctrine. Well, look what NASA keeps, you know, they they always name the, they name everything seems like after this Greek pantheon. I mean, what is Apollo, all these Apollo missions that has to do with the sun deity? Uh, what is Osiris Rex that they just named this thing? Osiris has to do with the sun deity. Ready, set, tag. NASA's Osiris Rex successfully stretched out its robotic arm for the first time in space as it readies to take a sample from the asteroid Bennu. Osiris Rex. Well, what does Rex mean? The reigning king, Rex, the reigning king. So they're literally naming this object Osiris, the reigning king. And what does Revelation 9, 11 say? It had a king over them. And they name it, name that king Apollyon. Same thing. It's a just a recurring doctrine. Uh, I, I wanted to show you this. This is by this channel uh, LXXXV111 and finished temperous and i don't know uh much about this channel but i just saw this video i am subscribed to him uh it's called the world's end the zodiac the sun and the king and so i wanted to show you this i'll leave a link to this video i'm not going to play their whole video but i'll leave a link to it but i wanted to show you how transparent this is when you know what to look for you just see this stuff uh in these movies uh and it just ties into pet goat too this is a classic example, they say, of a Masonic Hollywood movie coding the Zodiac in Christ as the solar deity. Now, just listen to this and watch, watch their work. I'll play just, I don't know, maybe a couple minutes of it. I think I've got it slowed. I've got it slowed now. No, I don't. The world's end. Ever have one of those nights that starts out like any other but ends up being the best night of your life? Are you sleeping comfortably? Then we'll be here. It was June the 22nd, 1990, our final day of school. There was Oliver Chamberlain, Peter Page, Stephen Prince. Andy Knightley. Let me start that over. Best night of your life. Are you sleeping comfortably? Then we'll be here. It was June the 22nd, 1990, our final day of school. 
There was Oliver Chamberlain, Peter Page, Stephen Prince, Andy Knightley, and me. They called me the King, because my name's Gary King. The King. Look, he's got the Eye of Horus. The King wears a Eye of Horus necklace throughout the whole movie. And me. They called me the King, because my name's Gary King. Ollie was funny. He fancied himself as a bit of a player, but really he was all mad. We called him O-Man because he had a birthmark on his forehead that looked like a six. O-Man six. A reference to Omen six six six. We called him O-Man because he had a birthmark on his forehead that looked like a six. Newton Haven was our hometown, our playground, our universe. And that night it was the site of a heroic quest. The aim was to conquer the Golden Mile. Twelve pubs along a legendary path of alcoholic indulgence. There was the first post, the old familiar, the famous cock, the cross hands, the good companions, the trusty servant, the two-headed dog, the mermaid, the beehive, the king's head, the hole in the wall, all before reaching our destiny, the world's end. We took my car into town. I called it the beast because she was pretty hairy. I remember sitting up there. Blood on my knuckles, beer down my shirt, sick on my shoes, seeing the orange glow of a new dawn break and knowing in my heart life would never feel this good again. And you know what? It never did. Disappointed? About what? That you didn't make it to the world's end. No. Just what is it that you want to do? Well, we want to be free. We want to be free to, to do what we want to do. And see, that's the theme. They think that by rebelling against Yahweh, they're, they're asserting freedom. Okay, and they view Yahweh as tyrannical. But Yahweh's not tyrannical. Yahweh is freeing men from sin. And Jesus says that in John chapter 8 around verse 32 through 34, where he says, uh, the one who commits sin is the servant of sin. He was telling them, the son will set you free. And they said, we've never been in bondage to any man. He said, whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. And that's what the Bible refers to when it talks about being set free. Uh, it's talking about freedom from sin. Okay, And so it's not a freedom to sin. It's a freedom from from sin sin is bondage but because people don't want to be delivered well they want to do that without any recourse or without any uh, judgment or recompense for their actions and that's not what's going to occur the bible speaks of a day when god will judge the world in righteousness by the man jesus christ who he raised from the dead in acts chapter 17 it says god will judge every man according to his deeds Without respect of persons, First Peter one seventeen. And we want to get loaded, and we want to have a good time, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a party. She's a beauty. She's no beast. Hello, Peter. Jesus. Gary, the once and future king. The once and future king. The guy sees him and says, Jesus. Friday, we'll all go down together, make a road trip of it. I'll drive. No, I don't think I can. I've you know, got a doctor's appointment. Yeah, you do. With Dr. Inc. You know, Dr. Inc. I'll leave the link for this video, but it's just interesting. The once and future king. The guy looks at him and says, Jesus, he's got the eye of Horus, uh, which represents the Antichrist. Uh, and it's called the world's end. It's got the 12 pubs, and it correlates that to the Zodiac system. And then it ultimately ties into the uh, the sun, okay, the, the, the sun deity. And I'll leave the link for this down below. Again, I don't know... Um, what this channel is about but when i saw this i i instantly just knew you know this is a parent 
representation of their doctrinal beliefs. And it just ties into the pet goat. It all ties together, man. They have a theme. I want you to understand this symbolism, all the stuff that's going on behind the scenes, these masons and all this, they're, they are getting ready to roll this out, okay? All this stuff that you see represented uh, as little hints and they kind of veil it with, uh, you know, trying to make a movie out of it, but they've got all this information in there pointing to Horus and, you know, the all-seeing eye, all this stuff. They have a belief system that they're going to roll out, and they have created a theological vacuum through all this pacification of men, through this prosperity gospel, take it easy, God's all about making you have a happy life, and then all of a sudden, boom, catastrophe hits, war hits, everything changes, and this theological vacuum that is being created people are going to be desperate and then they're going to fill that vacuum with the deception okay and so people are going to go from knowing almost nothing to being deceived okay and that's why it behooves us during this time even though it seems like things are going to go on normal it's not to take heed and study and stay close to god because this, this deception is coming and we need to prepare and understand what is going on okay and be witnesses and stand against it because this is not the true christianity but that's what they're painting it out as uh, and again it all just is shown in this pet goat too it has a timeline in it okay and i was going to show you this at the end this cave is enlarged. I'm not going to spend much time on it, but this is the same cave that you are drawn into uh, in the beginning, but now it is opened up because the birth canal has opened up for him to be born. But this is the same cave that you are drawn into here, but it is not yet expanded because when a woman goes into labor, this is the same cave you can tell by the edges, but it's narrow. Uh, and there's actually a part below it. You, it just shows it as it's zooming out this part underneath it that would prevent the boat from coming out. But when a woman goes into labor, she has contractions and her cervix expands and she, her body uh, enlarges the birth canal where she can give birth. Okay, And that's what it's showing you here that, you know, drawn into this cave where it's not yet as open as it is at the end when the Antichrist comes out. Okay. And I'm thinking this church here also ties into what we've been talking about, uh, the Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. It has pane glass at the top of it. Maybe not, uh, but just a thought here. But this church, the Antichrist comes out, the church falls apart. And if you haven't seen my video, uh, the greatest danger in pet go to at least watch the first one in that series uh, i suggest watching them all but at least the first one because they are trying to deceive you ladies and gentlemen they are about to roll out this antichrist doctrine that's what albert pike says in his third world war his letter when they talked about the world wars before they even occurred that the third world war would uh bring about such social category they would bring about social cataclysm uh, that would make people desperate. And then as the people are desperate and they don't know where to uh, look for divine guidance, they're going to roll out the quote-unquote pure doctrine of Lucifer. Okay, And that is what they're doing here. And they said that's going to be after the Third World War. Well, the Third World War is about to occur. Ladies and gentlemen, You know, as, as, as much as it seems like everything's going to go on normal forever, it's not. And the Bible warns us about these things. And we should take heed, pray about it, stay close to God, keep a clear conscience. And again, this video points to December 3rd. Okay, That's the strongest analysis I can give. And I, I would suggest watching that video I put out called uh, Strong Evidence 
that pet goat to uh, refers to December the 3rd. Okay. And that pertains to this right here. So there you go. So as a recap, yeah, it points to the sun and the moon coming together and then the child being born as a result of the rays of the sun, the crypt opening. The crypt opening and that child ascending, if you will, towards the sun. And you just see this imagery repeated uh, elsewhere. You see the sun, the woman sitting in the sun. Uh, and they tie this into Revelation 12. But as I showed in my video series, The Greatest Danger in Pet Go 2, that they are misusing the scripture. Uh, so I would suggest watching that and keep a clear conscience. Because they're the way they're going to present it is that basically it's not about sin and righteousness. It's about transcendence. It's about transcendence and rebellion against Yahweh and an assertion of one's own will against the will of Yahweh. And they paint that out as freedom. Okay. So, talk to you later.